Hey, what's up guys? So today I am not able to put my transmission in because I'm not able to get into the garage that I had lined up. So today I will be taking a few things down off the tranny. This is it in its glory. I'll be taking the shifter linkage off, taking the tranny brace off, inspecting the sensors more, checking out the seals because Probably just going to bite the bullet and replace those. Last thing I want is to have a, a leaky axle. But yeah, I'm going to do a little bit of disassembly on this. And before that actually gets started, I am going to be doing a little makeshift training cradle, I guess you would call it. I'm going to do it so I can stand the transmission up with the input shaft down. So it'll be obviously standing up with the bracing high enough off the ground so the actual shaft itself does not protrude into the floor because that would kind of suck. Another thing I'm going to be doing is disassembling the clutch flywheel setup to see what kind of life the trainees actually had. If it's all torn up, burnt out, whatever. Find that out pretty quick. But yeah. Alright, what I went ahead and did is I measured this right here and I determined I'd probably want it to be, for the 2x6, is about 8 inches spread apart, just so it had a good baseline. And I figured the best setup would be a couple diagonals on the bottom and a few more on the top, just so it didn't teeter. Kind of like domino effect. But I'm going to go ahead and screw things together and put the training on and See if it wiggles. Alright guys, so I got it all put together now. I'm going to put the tranny on it and see if it's the right distance apart so it doesn't teeter, I guess. Enough for me. I'll start taking the, I guess, half part of the cradle off and then start doing the linkage. Just see what else is up from there. Alright. So the, the nuts for the Training cradle. These are 14s. So I'm just going to undo these to take this off, and then I'm going to undo the actual five speed training mount from the transmission. Those are also 14s. When I move on onto the linkage, I believe those are all 12s. So that should go relatively easy. Under the wire that was already cut, but I'll get to that later. For a cheap impact. I bought the Ryobi just over Christmas time when it was on special from the depot. It's only a hundred bucks. And so far, I like it. I haven't had an issue with it. It's definitely a lot better than doing all that stuff by hand, which I am used to. Alright, 
Alright, so now for the linkage. I got my 12s out. Maybe I'm doing this guy right here. And then also the ones from my actual shifter. I gotta make sure to save all this hardware because it's all in really good shape because it's very low mileage car it came from. It's like someone spray painted the tranny cradle black because that was all fresh paint on the hardware. It's all black right here too. And it's not like it rubs off or anything like it was smoke or anything. I'm pretty sure it's paint, so that's interesting. That's seen better days. So I'll probably flatten that in a vise. Alright. So if anyone's looking for a cherry shift knob, got one for you. And another way to realize that this tranny was actually from Forster is this chrome shifter trove. So I don't think they want anything else. And this transmission is from the Forster Cross Sport. A lot of people don't know what that is. Forster Cross Sport is the one that came with these body pieces on it. In my opinion, the best looking forester out there. Beautiful styling from Japan. They know what they're doing. I got that off. These bushings look fine, but I think I'm going to regret it if I don't swap them out. I'll have to look into that. See what the output shaft looks like. They taped this up just because of fluids. I'm not gonna be able to get it off. Get some really good Japanese red duct tape. As you can see, it's dented right there. I'll have to push that out. Just so the outer cup of the drive shaft doesn't rub on it. But that's to be expected with these. They're shipped all the way from Japan in crates. Another thing I wanted to go over is the difference between the normal 5-speed training mount and also the Group N STI 5-speed training mount. As you can tell, there is a huge difference. And just with the amount of added material there, it makes it a lot more rugged than this. This is very flimsy, and just think of when you're actually either driving or racing, just the, the sheer impact of force being put on that quite a bit more than people realize. So that is a noticeable difference when upgrading training mounts. It keeps the training itself held in place a lot easier. And guys, another thing to remember, when you are when you're standing the training up like this and you think it's empty, that's a lie. There was enough in it still to make quite a bit of mess and it came out of the dipstick tube so keep that in mind that's originally why I put down the cardboard anyways I'm glad I did I just should have thought more about it I guess there's another feature I wanted to go over 
is the actual front shifter bushing. This is the factory one. As you can see, it's literally just rubber. So when you notice sloppy shifts, or just slop in general on the shifter, it's normally because of this. I'm replacing this piece of rubber with a nice Delrin piece from Subimont's. Delrin, it's just a very hard plastic. A lot of race cars actually use Delrin in place of many of the rubber bushings and pretty much all kinds of things. If you remember, this piece mounted right here, but without the dramatic bend from shipping. So that helps the actual base of shifting itself and the rear shifter bushing, which is this guy right here, that mounts to the under part of the car, is the base for that guy right there. So, instead of hating life and doing all this stuff again afterwards, I'm just going to do it right now. I did it previously in a few of my other cars and it was a world of difference, so I'm really happy with these mods. I already know that they're going to work and they're already proven, so no complaints. If you guys were worried about the JDM STI Group N mount not being a direct replacement, it is. It literally, if you know what you're doing, goes in place, factory holes, literally factory fitment because it is direct from Subaru. So you know it's also a quality piece. Alright, so now we're going to be taking apart the clutch assembly to see what the material on the disc looks like. All these for the pressure plate to the flywheel are 12s. And there's eight of them, I think. Make sure to hold on to this hardware, too. Oh, well, there's six. Might need to pry it a little bit just to get out of the dowel pins. Well, there's not much of a lip on the flywheel. I was curious about that myself. Only rust from it sitting around. Clutch is worn, but it's not terrible. It's not down to the rivets, and it doesn't really look too glazed over. Not saying I would reuse it, but it's just nice to know what you're dealing with. But yeah, always hold on to this hardware. You don't reuse it now, you might need it another time. Oh, Baron. Seems okay, I don't see any wear marks. I might reuse that just in case my factory ones, you know, worse for the wear. But all in all, it's nice having options, even if they're not brand new. This stuff's at least clean. You probably. No. I don't even think I would bother trying to refresh any of this to reuse. Just hold on to the hardware and maybe use the throw up and that's about it. But all in all, I don't think this transmission was beat too bad, judging by the clutch. If that was worn, I would think maybe it had a rough life, but yeah, it looks like it had a pretty easy one. And because of the leaking, which it did quite a bit of, I decided, since I didn't need it stood up anymore, I'd lay it down. Fits pretty well on the cradle. So I'll just leave it like that. I'll probably take some brake clean to it and clean up where the, the gear fluid ran out of. Take care of that output shaft cone. 
maybe take off a few other things that aren't really needed because they're already on my car but all in all still it's just my looks because it's obviously not in I don't know how clean it shifts but as of right now I'm pretty happy with it the guys over at JDM Engine Depot they hooked me up got the sale price on it so it was cheaper than it was even listed for online well, on eBay at least on their website it was a different price so they honored that but all in all I'm happy with the experience doing with them checking out their facility up there because it was, it was pretty cool seeing a lot of the stuff that you never see stateside but I'm shooting for actual install next weekend the garage that I need to use should be open then and I should have a helping hand maybe a few I'm not one that usually asks for help but something like this it's kind of heavy kind of need it as pro tip always bag it if you don't you may regret it later it helps the label too think about it